If you consider yourself not a great animator, then this week's video is for you. We are going to easily animate this flying Millennium Falcon with some really cool tricks and you don't have to be good at animation to follow along. So we're gonna do this in Autodesk Maya and this is taken as an excerpt from my Animate a 3D Looping Millennium Falcon Trench Run course, which you can watch. It's about two and a half hours and 13 lessons on digitalcreatorschool.com if you become a member. So let's jump into the tutorial. So in this lesson, this will be the free alternative version. Uh, instead of using your iPhone and a paid app, you can actually grab this script from Gumroad, which I'll include in the PDF download a link to, uh, this from, it's Devin. I don't, I don't know their, their full name, but it's a free, you know, $0 um, record adder tool. And I think there's several out there online, but this is just one I found. And essentially, it's, uh, if you know After Effects, it's like motion sketch in After Effects where you can move your mouse and it's recorded in real time um, in the app. So what we can do is uh, you can download that and it's simply just a script that you open from the script editor. So Inside of Maya, all we have to do is go to the script editor down here at the bottom right, and we can go to file open script. And then we just need to navigate to where this script is, which is for me in my downloads folder. So I have the record at our script, I'll hit open. And now we have that script in our script editor. I'm gonna hit control H and then just play that. And it will open up the tool itself. So now we can close the script editor. And we need to load the object that we want to record. And again, for to make this nice and easy for every <laughs> everybody, I'm going to just grab a cube that's going to represent our Millennium Falcon. So I'm just uh, created a cube, uh, vertex snapped it up here. I'm just going to scale it up and kind of in a somewhat flying uh, shape here. And so uh, flat shape rather, and then. Uh, what I can do is also go to an orthographic view. So let's see, I think it's in the front view. I'm holding down space, left click, drag, front view, and hit A. Here we go. Because I want to see, I want to make sure I'm kind of going within the bounds of the, the trench. Now, obviously, the limitation of this is we kind of only have like two axes here, and it's based on the camera view that you're in, essentially. You could try to add or record the rotate here, but then you would need to change the manipulator to rotation as opposed to having it in translation. So I can't like move and rotate this just by clicking and dragging. Hopefully that limitation is clear. We'll just be able to click and drag this around, but what I'm gonna show you here in a second is how you can take that animation you can actually paste it onto rotation. So I'll show you how to do that here. We have our kind of representation. I'm gonna load the object to record. I'm gonna choose add the attribute to record and I'll hit record. Now, it's important too that maybe we increase the, the timeline here a little bit. So maybe let's say 400 because there is a bit of a lag from when the uh, this script starts running to when it actually starts recording. So if we start at frame one, it's gonna maybe be even like 20 or 30 frames before it starts recording. So I'm gonna hit record and then now I can kind of drag this thing around and it'll be as smooth as as the motion of my um, of my mouse is. So I'm just kind of going in these figure eights. And then when we're done here, it should have this recorded. And as I scroll back through, you can see indeed it did record my mouse movements. Now you can kind of see how we're comparing the two motions. You know, obviously we're missing pitch. Um, that's a rotation. We're missing the roll here, but there's something that we can kind of do that's that's kind of cool here. So let me just, now that we have some animation to work with, I'm gonna close that tool out and I'm gonna go back to perspective here and we need the graph editor. So I'm gonna go Windows, Animation Editors, Graph Editor. And we can see the motion. Now it, it can be uh, appear a bit jagged, so one really cool uh, tool in, built inside of the graph editor is a filter to smooth stuff like that out. <clears throat> so what we can do is go to curves, smooth filter. I'm just gonna open this up because we actually see a preview uh, as well in the graph editor. So if I toggle preview on and off, we can kind of see how much <clears throat> it's smoothing. And we wanna change the sample rate to 24 because we're animating at 24 frames a second. So we don't wanna record 
30 frames a second when we're working in 24. So that's why I'm changing that to 24. And then the cutoff frequency will just smooth this out. We can preview that occurring in the graph editor in real time. So that's pretty cool. We can kind of smooth out the motion, whether you know the, the app itself or the, sorry, the script itself was, you know, uh, a bit noisy or I was moving a bit noisy, we can smooth that out. So I'm gonna do that. And then, hey, I just wanted to pop in and say thanks for watching so far. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you wanna see more tutorials like this. I'm gonna take the side-to-side -side motion, which is Translate X, I'm gonna copy it, and then I'm gonna paste it on the trans, uh, the Rotate Z. So I'm gonna hit Shift E to just set a single keyframe on a rotation. I'm gonna delete these other two rotations because I'm not worried about those right now. And then I'm just gonna Control V and paste that in. Now I'm gonna select all of those keyframes in the graph editor. And then I'm gonna control click the translate X so I can kind of see them side by side here. So I'm gonna shift middle mouse drag this, all of these keyframes down so that they're just slightly offset from the translation. So uh, we can hit play. We can kind of see how that rotation is making sense uh, in tandem with the translation. So we're working smarter, not harder by using the rotation that we already, the, the, the keys that we already have to paste onto the rotation. Now we could play with this and see if maybe we get a better results uh, by offsetting in a different direction, but I think this, uh, and by how much, but I think what we had here just by a little bit makes the most sense. Now, the other thing we can do is because especially rotations are kind of working off of the zero axis, it's really easy to scale this stuff. So I can go to edit scale and uh, hit the option box here. And then I wanna scale from zero. So I'm gonna just hit edit reset settings. So we're all starting the same and we're pivoting from the zero uh, mark here, the zero value. And then I can just say times that by 1.1. And then I can just hit apply multiple times. We can see I'm scaling the key value. So I'm actually rotating more than the original paste that I did. So we're getting a lot more rotation um, with the same keyframes. I'm just scaling them up evenly because I know I'm going left and right. And so I want to make sure everything's kind of scaling evenly and at an interval that makes sense that I can adjust pretty easily by just keep hitting apply or hit undo if it's too much. But I think something like that looks pretty cool. And, and of course, sorry, let me, let me just, you know, put a bow on this one. If you haven't watched the other lesson, you essentially would constrain the Millennium Falcon to this uh, cube. So <clears throat> what you could do is choose the cube first and then the Millennium Falcon, then go to parent constraint. Um, and uh, let me just delete that constraint real quick. And I can actually just show you in case you have skipped the last lesson. So I'm going to choose the cube first and then the Millennium Falcon locator, go to constraint, and I'm just going to make sure maintain offset is off. And then I'm gonna hit apply. Now what I can do is actually just hide the cube and all we have is the Millennium Falcon. <clears throat> now I discussed this in the last um, lesson, but I wanna make sure this is clear here as well, that you can actually go to the parent constraint and go into the attribute editor and create an offset here. So you can see that the Millennium Falcon is facing the wrong way. So what we can go is go to rotate for Y, this is X, Y, Z in that order here. Um, and that's why I'm choosing the middle one. And I know I need to rotate in Y, so that's why I'm doing uh, 180 degrees there. So now we have that one following that. We still have, you know, from the last lesson, we have the camera animation from the iPhone app. So we have two versions here of the animation that we can use for the next lesson where I'll show you how we can easily loop this using the time editor. Thanks for watching. So thanks for watching this lesson. If you wanna see the entire course, please visit digitalcreatorschool.com and you can enroll as a member to see the rest of the course.